Hello everyone, Mary here again. So far, I would like to thank all teachers that reached out to me on Instagram and Facebook talking about my first video. I'm very, very glad, you know, my ideas could help you save time and are useful for your lessons. Okay, if it's the first time you're watching my videos, I'm talking about uh, simple, easy to prepare speaking activities for you to use during your online lessons, okay? So I've decided to create a second and a third video about it because people asked for more ideas. All right, so then today it's going to be a shorter video with five ideas that all you need is internet connection, okay? So you don't need any planning, any prior preparation for this because we know as teachers that sometimes we teach one hour lesson, but we spend two times preparing the lesson. So what I'm trying to do is just to help people save in time, you know, and basically to really engage students in nice, fun, uh, interesting speaking activities. All right, so let's just go straight to the first one. I'm just going to show you exactly how I do with students. So we are going to start with um, a, an activity that I call, call Feel the Sound of Nature. So for this activity, you're just going to go to a website. I'm going to put all um, links below. OK, so they are going to be below here. Um, and basically, you just have to go to this website, open it. Look, I've got it in here. And there are a lot of different sounds we can choose from. And we are going to show the students. Okay, so for example, look, we've got the rain, thunder, waves, wind, fire, we've got some different sounds here. And if you're asking, okay, but what are we going to do with the sound? So basically what I do is I play, I choose, or sometimes as I ask them to choose um, two or three sounds together, I play the sounds and they will have to describe the situation that um, they would feel like if they were hearing this sound. So for example, let me just go, um, I'm going to be quiet for a second so you can hear the sounds. Okay, let me just share my audio with you. For example, I'm going to press play and I'm going to put some rain together with um, some waves. Okay, so then I asked the student, um, can you imagine, can you try, you know, to be creative and just, you know, let your imagination flow? And what kind of situation would you imagine yourself in if you are hearing this sound? So they are going to say things like, well, probably it's a very uh, cold day, it's winter, I'm inside, I'm, I'm not out, I'm not going outside because it's raining a lot. And they have to describe a situation. Okay, so we can use, for example, the coffee shop. Yeah. So in this case, they are going to say, obviously, well, we are in a public place, maybe I'm with a friend, I'm with my family, I'm with my mother, so we are having a coffee. And so this is very, very nice because we, you, we can talk about the words that are here. So we can talk about, oh, can you explain to me? Can you describe a thunder? Are you afraid of thunders? You know, so we can always use questions to adapt adapt the level of the student and to kind of control the, the activity a bit more. Some students, they don't need it. Some students, they just start, start talking. They've got a um, very good imagination, you know, so you just let them talk. Of course, you can correct their mistakes if needed, or you can just um, write the mistakes just the corner and then you can go back to the mistakes. So this is your way of teaching, whichever you prefer, you know, it's going to be all right, but basically let them talk. And if they are not, ask them questions, okay? So let's go straight to our activity number two, which is sell me a house. Why do I like this one so much? Because basically you don't need any preparing, any at all. What you're going to do is you, I don't know where you're based, so maybe maybe you are in Australia, maybe you are in the United States. So in my case, I chose a website from the UK. Um, so the name of the website is Zopla. And it's basically a website where you can find properties. All right, so you go to this website. Let's say, for example, um, the city of Portsmouth in South England, and I'm planning to buy a house. Well, my imagination. So I'm planning to buy a house. I'm very general today. General, sorry. So basically, I'm planning on spending one million, one million pounds uh, on a house. So let's search for options here for me. 
Okay, so you can do all of this together with the student, you can choose together a place, you can choose, or maybe you are from Australia, but the student is planning to go uh, to live in Canada, so you're going to look for a house in Canada, so you can give the student this possibility of choosing, you know, um, where, where he wants to go. So let's say, for example, oh, this is very cheap, that's very nice, it's a free bed for us to house. So what we do is we go inside the property and we ask the student to convince us to buy it. So for example, with this one, they're going to say, look, you can see there's a carpet, no furniture. And then you go, well, but I really like a house with furniture. Okay, so maybe this one is not for you. Let's go back and let's find another one. And then you can try to find a, a better match. Okay, so this, maybe this one is going to be better. And you have to ask the student to convince you to buy the house. So the student is going to be a real estate agent and they will have to persuade you to buy it. Oh, look, this one, there is furniture as you like. So as you can see, the walls are very uh, original and the pattern is amazing. Um, the colors are very bright. So there's no carpet there. So if you are allergic, you know, if you go on allergy, that could be a good thing. So basically, you are going to stimulate your student to ask you questions, you know, because they have to ask, oh, are you, do you like carpet? Or do you like, um, do you prefer a four bedroom or a, four, a five bedroom house? So they will have to ask you questions. And at the same time, they will have to convince you to buy this one. Okay, and at the end, of course, you can you can tell them, I'm really sorry, but you didn't, you couldn't, you couldn't convince me, right? So maybe you have to work a bit more on your convincing um, manipulation, persuasion skills, right? So very nice one, especially if the student is, is um, learning parts of the house or if it's an advanced student that needs to have business skills, you know, to convince people to do, to do stuff. So nice one, highly recommended, okay? Number three, um, as I mentioned before, on my, my first video, if you, if you didn't see it, if you haven't, if you haven't watched it yet. Um, so basically what I mentioned um, in my previous video is British Council is an amazing website, probably if you're a teacher, if you've been teaching for, for a while, you probably know the website. Um, there are loads of resources there, loads of materials for teachers. And this is one of my favorite things. So basically the session, I've got the website here, right? The session is called Guess the Photo. And they are going to show you just a small part of an object and people have to guess what the object is. Okay, so for example, the one I chose, the one I use on my, uh, for my slides is this one. So how are you going to get your student talking? You are going to ask them, what do they say? So what do you see here? Well, teacher, I see, well, actually, I don't know, but it looks like um, a fruit. Um, it's yellowish, and I can see a very strange texture. So again, you control the level of the activity, because if it's a basic student, you are just going to expect them to talk about colors or shapes. But if it's a more advanced student, you can ask them about what about the texture? How do you call this kind of texture? And what could you do? And you can kind of level up, okay, with, with the questions. So if you are wondering what this thing is, you can see the answer here. So in this case, this is the stone of a peach. Some of them are very simple, to be honest. So you have to choose carefully, right? So I recommend you going to the website before just to have a look, two minutes. Um, but basically, look, this one, for example, I think it's a bit easy. So it going, it's going to depend on your goal and what part of the lesson you're going to use this activity, if it's just a warm up, five minute warm up, or if it's a child. So everything is going to depend. Okay. Right. So we are going to go to number four. I love this one. So I call this activity, what should I read next? So this is the name of this website I'm showing you. So basically, I first thing, I ask the students about the books that they like. So do you have a favorite book? Or um, if you don't have one, because nowadays, unfortunately, it's not very common to people, you know, for people to be reading a lot, you know, they're always using their phones, but especially teenagers, they do have to read books for school. So if they don't have a favorite one, I just ask about any book that you can remember or the last book that you had to, to read. And I ask them to uh, tell me the story of the book. 
So I want to know everything. I want to know the title. I want to know the characters. What do they do? Is it a romance? Is it a science fiction? Is what kind of book? Um, what's the story? And even the end, if they want to tell me the end, I don't, I don't mind. Okay, so basically they talk and usually um, they do talk with passion because we are talking about their favorite book. And after that, what we do that is very interesting, they really like it, is we go to this website, which is called What Should I Read Next? And we put the name of their favorite book here. So in my case, for example, I really like The Little Prince. So we can just write there, The Little Prince, click on it, and the website is going to give us a list of books that I should read in the future. Okay, so according, so based on my preference, based on my um, interest, they are recommending these books. So Pollyanna, for example, Pollyanna Grows Up, or The Boy in the Stripped Pajamas, or The Beautiful World. So what I do here is, if they like reading, they're going to love, 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 love this website because most, um, many students, they are asking for books recommendations. Um, and some of them, if they don't really like reading, we just go through the list, we can hear the pronunciation when reading the name, reading aloud, the name of the books, or we can just ask them, oh, um, do you know any of them? Or, oh, this is a very famous one, have you heard of it? Okay, so what do you know about this? So this is a drama, what is a drama? So again, the questions, you know, I think this is something that we teachers, we do have to know very, very well, how to ask questions depending on the level and depending on the student and depending on your goal. If you see that there are, there's five minutes, you know, just five minutes left, there are five minutes for, for the lesson to end. Of course, you're not going to be elongating and asking loads of different questions. So again, it depends, okay? You can adapt to your own lessons. And I've got the last one, which is finding a perfect gift. So with this one, I really like it because it's also very random, okay? So it's not, I really love to motivate my students to, uh, to talk about random things so we can make sure they are ready for a variety of settings, you know? So if they go to a party, they know how, how to talk to people. If they go to a culture event, they know how to talk to people. So I always emphasize this. Um, I always tell my students, random knowledge is really, really important. Okay, so be able to talk about anything, okay, any topic, especially if they are going to prepare for an exam, because of course, during the exams, we don't know exactly what they are going to be asked, so they need to be prepared. So this, finding a perfect gift, most of us, we've been to these websites where you can find, you know, products, random products that you can buy. The good thing about these ones with promotions and discounts is usually they, they sell you a product or a package. It's not just like Amazon that you can buy a product. You know, you can buy sometimes a service or experience or a package and for two people, for three people. So what I do is we go, um, there are lots of things we can do with this one. I can ask them, um, who, is the, who is going to be the next person uh, the next birthday in your family. So, okay, the next birthday is going to be your mother's birthday. So let's go and find a, a gift for her. Or we can do, for example, mm, let me choose one here. Right, so I'm going to choose, well, this one here. Right, so this is a one or two nights for two people. And where? In a standard double room with breakfast. So this is like an experience that you are buying here. So I ask them, sometimes I ask them to read a part of it so I can say, oh, can you please just read, you know, this, these paragraphs so I can hear their pronunciation and their intonation as well. And then we discuss the details of the gift, right? So who is this for? Do you think this is appropriated for, um, I don't know, for your friend or maybe your grandmother? So who is the person that you think is going to like something like that? You know, so we can, again, as all other activities, we can kind of control what we talk about. And if we know that this guy is a guy that loves sports, we can just go and choose something that is related to sports. Okay, so oof, I think that's it. That's it for today. So these are the five activities I've got for today. Um, if you can, please 
subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to upload more videos like that. So I'm planning, I've got the third one already ready for you with all the five speaking activities, easy speaking activities for online lessons. And I'm also planning on doing some uh, videos on creative grammar exercises, creative pronunciation exercises. So loads of materials, loads of things that I will be sharing with you because I really, I was really, really glad to see all these teachers talking to me and, and telling me how much these things are going to help them. Okay, so I think online teaching is the future and that's why we are here for, you know. So thanks a lot, like this video, subscribe and I see you in the next one. Okay. Bye, Jesus.